So do you have a two pack or maybe even a four pack, but no matter what you do, your lower abdominal region just looks like crap? Well, guess what? You can do something about it today. You can actually target this area effectively if you use the right exercises. You see, lucky for us, a lot of research has been done that actually shows that you can more favorably activate the lower abdominal fibers over the upper abdominal fibers based upon the exercises that you're doing. And what we're basically talking about is utilizing the bottom up movements rather than the top down. When you start to initiate an ab exercise like a crunch that starts from the top moving your chest down towards your pelvis, that's a top down movement. But on the other hand, if you can choose exercises that start by moving your lower half up towards your chest, that's a bottom up movement and you can see that these fibers will initiate that contraction so we can do something about it. But now because I care about you, we're going to have to have the all important public service announcement. You know, the one where I tell you there are limits to your ability to target. While the exercises that you choose can more effectively target the lower abdominal region, you're never going to be able to use these exercises to target a specific area of fat. You know, the one that you're carrying down there. No matter which exercises you're doing or even how many of them you are doing, you're not going to be able to undo the haagen and ring dings you just ate. Now that being said, can we talk about the exercises because if you do these, they're going to help. And the first exercise up is actually a variation of a basic reverse crunch. You've probably done it before, but pay attention because there's three things you need to make sure you get right. The first thing is you got to flatten that back out because what that's doing is creating a posterior pelvic tilt which is going to activate those lower abdominal muscles. If you have the ability to slide your hands under your back, you've got too much of an anterior tilt, and you've already negated some of the benefits of the exercise. So your goal should be to not be able to fit your hands under your back if you've done this right. The second thing you need to do is set the angle of your legs. Ideally, you could do this with a 90 degree bend at your knees and a 90 degree bend at your hips. Now, if you want to make this a little bit more challenging, you would just simply extend the legs a little bit further out so you have more weight to lift, or you just bring your knees a little bit closer to your chest. But the key is once you establish whatever angle you're going to use, you need to keep it there and then move the pelvis and the legs together as one unit. You see, a lot of people do this wrong. They just simply start to swing their legs up and down, and all they're doing is overworking the hip flexors. And as you can see here, that's not the role of the abdominal muscles. You want to be able to curl the pelvis back towards your chest and let the legs go along for the ride and not just have the legs drive up and down, which overactivates that hip flexor and can oftentimes lead to back pain. Now, the variation I like to use on this exercise is one that actually gives you some feedback to let you know you're doing it right, and we call it the swiper. So all you have to do is set that angle, again, based on your ability level, and then move the pelvis backwards towards your head. And you want to be able to do it long enough that you can swipe your hands underneath, touch each other, and come back out to your sides. This is going to delay the time that it takes you to do the exercise, increasing the time under tension and making those muscles work even harder. If you're just beginning, go a little bit faster with the hand swipe. But if you're more advanced, try to deliberate a little bit more by going slower and making your abs do more work. Exercise number two is another one you probably tried before, maybe done a lot of, but not like this. And that's the big difference. You see, you might call these seated knee tucks, but you want to think of them differently because you're not just trying to tuck your knees towards your chest. Instead, think of it like you're going to lift your tailbone off of the ground, and the knees should go much higher. Try to think of them going almost as high as your forehead, even if they can't reach. The point is, you're looking to create that same posterior pelvic tilt, because that's what's going to engage those lower abs. And if you can get this right, the exercise becomes a lot more effective. If you don't, and you just continue to pull those knees towards your chest, once again, you're just over-activating the hip flexors, which is just going to lead to probably low back pain, but not help you to target the lower abs like you're trying to. Get the tailbone up on every rep, and I promise you, better results will come. And speaking of results, if you haven't gone to athletenext.com yet, what are you waiting for? We actually have step-by-step -step plans, and all you have to do is take our quick program selector, and I'll find you the program that matches your goals. Now, back to the exercises. You're wearing the wrong shirt, Chief. Oh. And then exercise number three is a variation of a plank. You guys know how I feel about traditional standard planks, but this is way better because it's way more effective. And it's called the plank knee slide. And the one thing that should jump out at you right from the get-go here is that I'm getting into that posterior pelvic tilt once again. So I bring my knee in towards my elbow, but then I slide it up because as I do that, it's going to lift my pelvis into that natural posterior tilt. Again, actually engaging those lower ab fibers. And if yours are doing the exercise incorrectly have caused the overdominance of the hip flexors, all you have to do is just slow it down. If you go slower here, you'll be able to feel the right muscles doing the work, and ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. But if you're up for even more of a challenge, then maybe you don't want to just do all of your exercises down on the floor. Instead, what you could do is just pop yourself up onto a bar, because the bar gives you a chance to do the same thing with a hanging leg raise. 
but nothing changes. You still have to establish that posterior pelvic tilt and you still want to try to bring your pelvis up as you do the exercise along with your legs. But the difference here is that the change in body position effectively increases the weight of your legs because you have to now lift them fully against gravity almost through the duration of the entire exercise. On the floor, that's not necessarily the case. Regardless, incorporating the same three principles we talked about in the beginning is going to make this exercise a lot more effective than just simply flipping your legs up and down without ever focusing on what's really happening with your pelvis. But you may be wondering, Jeff, what are you still doing carrying that damn muscle marker around? It's because I'm not done yet. You see, there's two things you can do to put the science back in strength and actually get more out of the same exercises I just showed you. And that's number one, engaging the adductors. Because we know if we just squeeze our knees together, which is easily done on three of the four exercises, that we can engage and stabilize the pelvis from below, allowing for a stronger contraction of the lower abdominal muscles. So if you take that swiper and you squeeze your knees together the whole time, the adductors will be easily engaged. If you take that reverse tailbone lift, again, squeezing the knees is very easily accomplished and added. And if you go to that hanging leg raise, the same thing can be applied here too, each time allowing you to feel the exercise even more. If you do the plank knee slide, two things should happen. The back foot that stays on the ground, you should almost feel like you're going to drag it inward to engage the adductor on that side. And then you take the other leg that's going towards your elbow, you actually bring it a little bit inward. And even if you want to take it another step further, you do the second thing, and that is you add a little bit of rotation. Because as you'll see, the lower ab fibers here actually have a little bit of an oblique orientation as they taper down towards the pelvis, which means they're sort of tailor-made for rotation. So you can take that plank knee slide and go towards the opposite elbow to get some of that rotation. But again, on the swiper, no one says you have to bring it straight back. Go a little bit towards the right shoulder and a little bit towards the left shoulder on alternating reps. And also on that tailbone lift, go a little bit towards the right shoulder or a little bit towards the left shoulder. Just a little bit of rotation can be introduced even here on the hanging leg raise to introduce more of that lower ab fiber engagement. Remember guys, I say it all the time, Follow the fibers. Whatever the direction they run in, that's the direction you should move in, and that's how you get more out of every rep of the exercises you already be doing. But I promise you that nutrition piece, because no matter how many times you do these exercises or how many reps you do, you're not gonna specifically target the lower abdominal fat and get rid of it. As a matter of fact, it's the last to come off. You see, when most men, and a lot of women for that matter, lose weight, they go from the head to the toes and the toes to the head, and they kind of meet in the middle which means that as they drop body fat in their face and their neck and their upper chest or in their lower legs and into their thighs, what oftentimes remains is that lower abdominal fat. It's the most stubborn of all. So you're gonna have to get to lower levels of body fat in order to see it go away. And while you're gonna have to be hypocaloric to do it, you don't have to starve yourself or make it unenjoyable. Guys, I have a whole day of eating that I put together where I show you you can eat carbs and actually eat enjoyable foods. I'm gonna link that for you here. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step plan, you can get it over at athletenext.com, a full 90-day meal plan. I hope you found the video helpful, guys. Make sure you click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.